right, so in the video today, we're going to go over um, creating um, sheet metal templates. Um, and in this case, we're going to we're going to take the air cleaner that we made, uh, it's the air cleaner cover uh, that I made for my uh, 1977 MGB. It's got a Weber DCOE 45 uh, carburetor on it, and um, we've installed a um, cold air intake uh, to bring cold air from the uh, front of the car rather than just getting all the air for the carburetor from the engine compartment. Um, so anyway, the air comes in from this direction um, and it's funneled down into uh, the velocity stacks from there. This, what you're looking at, is a um, 3D model. It's a, a, a prototype um, of what, what that cover needs to be. And it's in a clamshell because when, when we did it originally, it was a single thing and it was almost impossible to install it. So um, by having a clamshell, it makes it a whole lot easier to install. This was printed in PLA. Uh, PLA is a very uh, soft, unforgiving material. It's really easy to print it. It doesn't take a lot of printer. Um, you can make mistakes and, and it, it corrects on its own. It's, not, it's, it's really a, a really easy material. Um, the problem with PLA is it's prone to uh, you know, having problems with heat. This was directly connected to the engine in the engine compartment and I mean it was a prototype. We never really intended to run on PLA but uh, I ran it for a little while just to see if I had a good suction and, and, and to do some testing. And so now we need to replace this. Uh, initially I was going to print this in uh, PETG. This is uh, a bit more uh, weather or uh, heat tolerant material, um, and it, but it's a bit more finicky. You can see I've got some rough edges down here, and when I installed it, I had some uh, layer delamination, and so I decided, you know what, let's get away from the 3D printing and go ahead and make this into um, a, a sheet metal model, um, and so I'm using these prototypes to lay out the templates. So that's really what the content is today, is, is how to template and um, design, layout, and create uh, a complex three-dimensional shape um, in sheet metal. So let's, let's get started on this. First off, this, this side is the bottom side. It's, a, it's, it's got some curves, so there's a little bit of complexity, but overall, it's just one sheet of metal and you just bend it in two places and then you um, you got to do kind of a complex join here uh, hopefully if I get and when I get this all done there will only be one rivet right here one connector right here at the top so this one will be connected this will be connected I'll have an extra tab on each of these that underneath will uh, be joined by one connector and that'll 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 hold the whole thing together uh, you can see I've made some notes on here that I want to fold this over on itself so it's twice the thickness. And I've added a tab. So when you fold this over the second time, this tab will meet up with that rivet. So that rivet will be holding this in place and these in place. That's the design anyway. We'll see how that works out. Um, but that's that's the probably the easier one in the bunch. And you can see it, it's just one sheet of paper. Uh, I've, I've drawn a line down here because I'm going to double this up on the bottom and uh, eventually we're going to have to find a way of joining this to the mounting bracket that we made inside the car. I'll take you inside there in a minute. All right, let's go on to the next one. This one is a bit more complicated. Um, and again, the focus here is uh, we don't want to have a whole lot of fasteners all over the place. We want to see as much of just the raw, shiny metal as we can. And with that in mind, um, I've made it so that all the fasteners are on a surface that you won't see when you're looking down at it. Uh, this surface right here is all is what you're going to see. And um, I've highlighted in yellow uh, this, that this is two pieces of material. This is one piece in the yellow and one piece in the white. And you can see this piece and this piece are also connected directly into this piece. So. Um, what I've done on here is I've taken my, 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 my rough material, right? This was my, my prototype. I took the prototype and I sprayed it with a little bit of contact cement. Um, 
and uh, ran some uh, just regular printer paper on it and, and was able to get it to stick. This contact tape, it'll come off pretty easily. You can see it's already starting to come up right here. It just makes it easier for you to do the folds without having to hold everything and you get all the dimensions just right. Um, so let me go over uh, the structure and how this is going to come together with two pieces. So first off, it's very much like the other one. It's a single piece with a rounded edge here and a rounded edge here, right? That's, that's if you're looking at that, that's really easy to visualize. Um, and, and then this piece here is kind of a waterfall. It goes bloop, bloop, two little bends. So that seems pretty easy to figure out. The hard part uh, to visualize was where to fill in these spots. And um, so that's really what the prototyping is all about. So when you, when you start to lay out your template, you can, you can figure out, oh, look, I need some space here. I can get it from, from this piece by folding down like that. Or I can get it from this piece by folding in here. And, and that gives you uh, a, a little bit easier way to visualize it by creating these templates. Now I've written, I've drawn on here, uh, these are tabs. Now these tabs aren't going to be on this side, they're actually going to extend beyond. But this is just to let me know a notation. Once I, I'll, I fold this out, where these tabs are going to come from. So when I cut in the material, I want to have extra material on here so I can create these tabs. And you can see I've got a tab down here that's going to connect to that one. I've got a big tab here that's going to connect to these three rivets right here. This one here gets folded over on itself right here. And that's what the 2X is. And um, when we install it, there's a bracket that goes across here. So we don't have to worry about that. Eventually, we're going to put a hole right here. So this bottom, again, it'll be doubled up over onto itself just to make it a bit more rigid on the edges. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take these off of the prototype and lay them out on, a, on a, uh, a, some sheet metal and, um, and get a better look at what it is that we're going to need to cut out. All right, out here in the workshop now. Um, see, I've got the uh, the templates laid out. This is uh, this is a piece of stainless steel from a um, recycled. Let's call it recycled. <laughs> it's recycling. Um, I mean, you're not a hoarder if you put the stuff back into <laughs> into purpose. I have a lot of spare stuff laying around. Um, anyway, I'm not a hoarder. I'm a recycler, <laughs> honestly. So anyway, uh, this is a piece of material that we're going to use. I just wanted to lay it out and kind of make sure everything will fit and we'll have enough material here to salvage out of this. Um, this is stainless steel. It's uh, shiny on one side and it's brush polished on the other side. I think we're going to take, uh, take advantage of the shiny side because uh, I like shiny stuff in my engine compartment and it's easier to clean. Um, uh, brushed, brushed stainless tends to collect the oil in the grooves and you end up getting really dingy. So um, that's what we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get a, a Sharpie and we're going to draw out um, you know, where the template is and then do the multiplication for the two X's and add the tabs where they need to be added. And then we'll go ahead and cut these things out and start folding. Now when I say folding, um, this right here is, um, is a hand break. What it does is it gives you the ability to grab onto a piece of metal and, and bend it um, at a specific line. Uh, it makes it really easy to, to work with metal like that. Um, and it, it's, a lot, it, it's a lot better than a pair of pliers because this is a nice smooth surface in here and it won't mar up the surface of the metal. So that's a handbrake. I also have uh, a couple of pair of shears. This is a, uh, a really strong pair of um, uh, metal shears. It, uh, it will handle really high strength pieces of metal. And for more detail work, I have just a pair of tin snips. This is, uh, these are pretty good. They have kind of a serrated edge and you can get around corners and, and rotate things a little bit easier with these. But they really can't handle really heavy duty. You can see they're a little bit marred in here already. They can't handle really heavy duty cutting like the other ones can. But uh, it's good to have a couple pair of you know, really good tin snips for this kind of thing. The other thing that you'll need is uh, some really good gloves. Once you start cutting into this stuff, it's like razor sharp. So uh, just, a, just a quick running your hand really quick along the edge will just, it puts a paper cut to shame. I mean, it'll just, it'll just slice you right open. 
Um, so okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get a Sharpie and we'll start laying these things out. All right, there you go. Um, you can see I've, uh, I've marked out where the tabs are gonna be and uh, where the cut lines and where the fold lines are. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting these things out and then we'll start folding and, uh, and we'll, we'll pick it up from there. All right, so there's the rough cuts done. I, uh, I had to use the Dremel in some places where it was really, really tight. I wouldn't be able to get the wrench in there or the, the, the snips and then like into these little areas. I had to use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel for that. Um, but uh, this is just the rough cut. Now you'll notice there's a lot of dimples and bending and whatnot. So the very next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to get out a nice flat piece of wood and uh, I'm going to flatten these out so that they're flat and true. Um, once we start bending, if there's any weird distortions or anything, we want to catch that before it gets too far. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring these, uh, these templates back into play. And we're going to work on bending, bending the tabs. Now bending the tabs comes first. I don't know if I'm on the right place. Yeah, here we are. We want to bend the tabs first uh, because once we start bending, you won't be able to get the wrench in there to bend the tabs. So you just need to make sure that you remember which way that they got to go. Um, and then as you bend, those will already be in the right position. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten these out and then we'll get started on bending. All right. So here, here you see I've got uh, this, this main piece. I've got all the tabs all bent in the direction that they're supposed to be bent. And I'm going to get ready for so, for the next little portion here, which is the folding. Uh, these large bends begin at certain areas, and I've marked where they begin so that I can keep track of um, what needs to be straight and flat and what needs to be curved. The, the curve is uniform across this entire length, and it will turn 90 degrees. So from here to there, it'll be 90 degrees. From here to there, it'll be 90 degrees. And in here you can see I've got this little flap folded in where it needs to be and I've got the tab pointed out where it needs to be. And I added a little tab on here. I'll probably cut that off. I don't know if that's going to be a pain in the butt or what. So maybe I will cut that off. It'll just be too thick. But uh, this tab right here, see I had drawn the tab to go all the way here, but it turned out that there wasn't enough material um, once you get it all cut because I would have had to cut into this area in order to get this tab down here So this tab only goes to this area Right there, but it's it's ample that that'll do what it needs to do um, So let's go ahead and start folding this you can see these tabs right here are kind of set they're on um, They're on a curve So for them to, to to fit they need to be triangular because they're gonna they're gonna come together in a point And then we'll run some rivets in there all right, let's, um, you can see down here, I've got this. This is the part that's going to be doubled over. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so this is ready to be bent, this one here. And you can see what this looks like up against the actual device. Kind of goes right in here like this. You can see this bend right here. This, this will come down and fill this spot, this right here. And then when this bends, this will, will go to this corner right here um, and pick up a rivet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do these big bends and then we'll check back in and start working on the next one. Alright, so this is this piece right here. You can see it's pretty well formed. The next little thing that we're going to do here is... Um, See, it fits all the curves. Everything looks like it's going to fit really well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to double this up. Uh, doubling over a piece of metal makes it more rigid uh, and less likely to bend. Specifically, these long straight pieces, you don't want them to bow in the middle. So um, we're going to double those over. You can't double over the edges that are curved without putting a slice in there. So you have to bend them in little pieces. Um, and uh, so that's... That's we're going to take and, and make some marks and some slices and we'll bend these over so that we can have a nice double over edge here 
and then we'll, we'll crease this one right in its spot. All right, and then this one will be done. We'll be ready to put the next piece on, which goes down here, gets doubled over, and then gets connected to all these with rivets. All right. Yeah, so before we get too far, I'm going to dry fit this um, this piece here. You can see we got plenty of clearance. Everything fits just perfect and nice and shiny. Um, that is exactly what we're going for. You can see the, there won't be any rivets visible from this view. Pretty much this is the one side that you'll see. All right, so uh, let's, let's finish up so we can get this thing mounted. Real quick, here's the, uh, the bottom ridge. I told you I was going to double it over. It, uh, it just it really makes it very rigid to have a little 90 in there that uh, firms it up. It's not going to be floppy at all. All right, so this next piece is pretty simple. If you recall, this is the, the piece that I had highlighted with the yellow. Um, it matches up like this. And we're going to fold this in half right here. And then we're going to do a 90 here. And then this will do a kind of a step down 90 like that. So there's a, a little slice right here for that. Um, this kind of is kind of a longer section right here. So I think I may end up putting that in the vise. And again, this piece is a little less critical because it's going to have rivets all over it, so I'm not too worried about the vise biting up on this. Um, but uh, it does have to fit into the place where it goes in. So, you see, I, I, I didn't cut it short. I left it a little bit wide with a little bit of a margin so that um, if I need to, I can trim it away. But you can never add metal back, and we're not, we're not welding or soldering this. Um, so I left a little bit of a margin so I can trim it if I need to. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can put this in the vise and get a good solid break right here to double this thing over. All right, so there you have it. These are the, this is the interaction between these two pieces. This piece is just, you know, double it over, bend it, bend it, bend it. It's kind of a step, and it sits in sits in right here, a little bit of a spring effect, but once we get the rivets in, everything will be nice and sound. I think that looks really good. All right, well, we have to do a little bit of trimming on this back side, I think, but we planned that. Um, better to trim than to have to fill. But uh, once we get the rivets in, this will be pretty much airtight. I think we'll throw some silicone sealer underneath just to make sure, but uh, anyway, on to the next piece, and we'll get these rivets in. <laughs> All right, so that's that one put together. I uh, made the tab at the top, kind of a big round tab. And um, you see they have kind of a spring going on. So um, what I'm going to end up doing probably is uh, pre-drilling the hole for where the rivet's going to go, and then putting like a, a, um, a screwdriver or something in there to keep everything positioned until I get it where I want it, and then we'll drive the rivet in. This right here, once we get the rivets in, that, that'll come closed. It'll be closed like that. Um, and then <clears throat> there's a little bit of trimming to do on this edge right here to make it match up. You can see, again, it was one of those cases where I cut it bigger than it needed to be because I didn't know what it was going to end up looking like after I bent the curve. So um, we'll trim that up to make it all match. And uh, so that's where we're at right now is uh, installing rivets. So let's get busy making some, uh, some drilling some holes and popping some rivets. All right, so that looks pretty good. We've got them all riveted up. Um, I'm, I'm not going to finish this one. I don't really like this, uh, this graduation here. Um, and I don't think, I think it's extra to make it rounded. I, I think we're going to go ahead and make this one um, cylindrical. Uh, so I'm going to redo this one. I'm, I'm not going to go through the trouble of um, finishing the bottom. But um, this, one, this one right here came out perfect. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that uh, all the riveting went. It's rigid. It's not floppy at all, um, and uh, it's stainless steel, so I mean it's going to last for freaking ever, so that's really great. 
So that is how I'm going to end the video today. Um, and uh, we'll get this into the car as soon as I finish up the, the mock-up on the second version of that. But um, check back. Make sure you subscribe. Check back with the project. Um, I only got more to do, so keep going.